Hey guys, welcome. We're back here in the grow room under the glow of the 6500K fluorescence. Uh, we got our Reishi buddies keeping us company there. They're looking good. But this video is going to be all about liquid culture again. And in my first liquid culture video, I mostly focused on using vented lids or lids that have these synthetic filter discs in them. And the advantage to those is they allow the pressure to equalize automatically when you pressure cook your liquid culture in these jars. And, uh, but there definitely are some times when you're going to want to use a non vented lid. And, uh, so I'm going to talk to you about in what situations you want to use a non vented lid. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple different, uh, styles of injection ports that I use that are highly effective. This is another one here. And I highly recommend you use the two styles I'm going to show you today. I've used a lot of injection ports and believe me, some of them are just bad. Uh, but the catch with a non-vented lid is that you don't have a filter disc to equalize the pressure for you. So you have to do it manually. And that's an extra step. It's a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to show you how to do that today step by step. And uh, once you guys do it a few times, you'll have it all figured out. So I'm going to flip the camera around here and we'll get rolling. Okay, so this is one of the vented jar lids that we made in our first liquid culture video. If you guys haven't watched that yet, I would highly recommend it. It's going to give you some background that's relevant to this video. Uh, this was made with a Micropose injection port and filter disc. They're self-adhesive. They work awesome. And uh, you can use them in all kinds of applications for mushroom growing. I will put a link to Micropose in the description of this video. But uh, there's some advantages to the vented lid and some disadvantages. So... <clears throat> Obviously, the filter disc allows the pressure to equalize automatically on your jar, so you don't have to do it yourself. So as this cools, it's going to draw uh, sterile air right through this filter disc into your jar, and the pressure will, will equalize. And that's important because with your liquid culture jars, you can't have them in a state of vacuum. So if you don't have a filter disc on them, you need to vent them yourself, which is what I'm going to show you today. Uh, the drawbacks to the vented lid is you're going to get super chunky mycelium because you're going to get lots of fresh air exchange. Your mycelium is going to go crazy in your nutrient broth. And uh, if you're not using really large gauge uh, syringes, you can get clogs because your mycelium is so chunky. Um, so that can be a disadvantage. Also, when you go to draw syringes out, you can't turn this right upside down because you can't keep getting this filter disc wet or else it's going to contaminate and the mold will go grow actually right through this filter disc what i use these for primarily is you know if you need a bunch of mycelium really quickly or uh you're doing like the mycelium flood method like we did in our cordyceps growing video uh you want a, as much mycelium as you can get out of this jar that's when you want to do a vented lid but uh, if you're going to really get into this hobby, you're going to want to start maintaining some cultures yourself so you don't have to keep buying syringes. Um, so you're going to want to maintain, you know, jars of each species that you're growing or strain or whatever. Um, so if you're going to look into make jars that, uh, you know, you're going to have these around for a year. Um, you don't need super chunky mycelium in here. You just need enough to inoculate grain or whatever. Um, I recommend going with a non-vented lid. Um, and the reason is they're just easier to work with in terms of pulling syringes in front of the flow hood. You can turn this thing right upside down. You don't have to worry about a filter disc getting contaminated. Uh, you can do basically whatever you want with them. And because there's a limited amount of fresh air in here, your mycelium isn't going to go crazy and get super chunky. So I use typically 18 gauge syringes with these non-vented lids and it works fine these are going to be master jars basically that i'm just going to store in a uh, in a tub in the refrigerator and whenever i need to inoculate grain or if i want to start another uh, liquid culture jar i'm going to pull from my master jars and uh, and go from there so there's two types of uh injection ports that I've had a lot of luck with and I'm trying to save you guys some headaches here because I've tried a lot of different products in terms of injection ports and there's two only two that I've found that really work well and this is the first one here um, this is basically uh, high temp RTV silicone 
And you can get RTV silicone at any hardware store or auto parts store usually. And uh, so what you do to make these lids is um, you just drill a hole, drill a hole in your lid, and then you get some of this RTV silicone and you just goop some on the top side, make a glob there, and then you goop some on the bottom side and you just kind of let that cure um, overnight because it does take a little while to cure. And, but what you get is a nice flexible uh, injection port like you see here. And usually, I, I mean, I'll run these, you know, I'll do hundreds of syringes through these things and uh, they, they'll still work. They won't lose their integrity. Um, so that's the first option is using uh, high temp RTV silicone. Again, you'll just punch a hole or drill a hole through your canning jar lid and uh, spread some silicone. Try to be a little neat because it can get messy. Um, but uh, spread some on the top surface, some on the bottom surface, uh, let it adhere and cure overnight, and then they're ready to use. Uh, the second method, which is uh, even easier uh, if you don't want to use RTV, is using these Micropose uh, injection ports. So these are self-adhesive. You just peel them off, and uh, again, you punch or drill a hole in your canning jar lid, and you stick these guys right on. Now, I just started using these this year. I've run them several times, and they're still working great. Um, I don't know if they're going to last as long as the RTV does. Uh, like I said, you can do hundreds and hundreds of syringes through this RTV. Uh, the the Micropose injection port seems to work really well, too. Uh, so if you don't want to mess with stinky, messy RTV, uh, just uh, go with these guys and uh, stick them right on. I'm using the same liquid culture recipe I used in the first video. I'm using light caro syrup as my sugar source. And we also have some of this uh, powdered soy peptone in there. So basically you're going for a 4% sugar solution. Uh, I have about 300 mils of distilled water in each jar. And uh, I also have about half a gram of the peptone in each jar. So you can use a lot of different sources of sugar. Some people use honey, dextrose, malt extract, lots of different things. But uh, you just have to make sure you get your math right because you want to end up with a 4% sugar solution. That's the key. And again, if you have more questions on that, I go over that in more detail in the first liquid culture video. So check that out. So I have seven jars here ready to go. Uh, I'm actually going to rejuvenate uh, six strains of mushrooms here. I'm doing an extra jar just in case one doesn't seal right or something goes wrong. So we're going to put these in the PC. Um, I'm going to cover each one with my little foil lids I like to use here. And they're going to go right in the PC like that. And we're going to get the PC up to uh, 15 PSI. Once it hits 15 PSI and starts rocking, we're going to run them for about 25 minutes and then shut her down. We have the Presto 23 quart set up on our 1300 watt electric side burner all set up ready to go. Again, make sure your base of your PC is nice and centered on your burner. That's pretty important for uh, getting good pressurization. Also, as always, I, I told you guys before, don't go crazy with your water. I have two quarts of water here. That's all you're going to need. You don't want to put a ton of water in here because uh, it's going to take it forever to pressurize or it won't pressurize for you. You can see our seven pint jars fit about perfectly in there across the bottom of the PC. And we're going to fire it up to about, um, we're going to go about four and a half for starters. And uh, once it gets rolling, I might kick it up to five here, but we'll see how it does. While our PC is heating up over there. Uh, I wanted to mention something about the uh, the canning jar lids as well. Um, so obviously these come with a lid and a ring. Now, if you're into canning, uh, you know a lot of times when you put stuff in the canner, you don't uh, tighten these rings down all the way. You just kind of go finger tight, and that allows a little uh, gas to vent from the inside of the jar. Um, when I do these liquid culture jars, I just go ahead and tighten these rings right down. Uh, the reason is I'm reusing these lids multiple times, which they're not really designed for to seal that many times. Um, again, I'm using a pint jar, 300 mils of liquid culture in there, 
and I have never had one of these fail or break or explode or anything in the pressure cooker. And I've done these probably, I could probably say thousands of times, <laughs> a lot, a lot of times. So if you're going to use, reuse these lids multiple times, which you should be doing, there's no reason not to go ahead and, you know, tighten those rings right down but with pint jars, 300 milliliters of nutrient broth and these rings snug right down. And I have never had any issues. Just hit 15 PSI. We're rocking and rolling. I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 25 minutes. And once the timer goes off, I'll just pull the plug, shut her down and let her cool. And it takes quite a while for these LC jars to cool. Um, obviously we're getting them up to 252, which is pretty warm and, uh, it's going to take several hours for them to cool down before we can work with them. Obviously never squirt any living culture into something that's hot. Uh, you got to let it cool down to room temperature or else you're just going to kill your culture. All right. Our PC's all cooled down. We have the flow hood running and, uh, I have a propane torch and a Sharpie all set up here for labeling our jars. And uh, everything's been sprayed down with rubbing alcohol and sanitized, so we're ready to go on to the next step here. I'm going to pull the lid off the PC, and I'll set the camera up so you guys can watch me work. But uh, when I pull the lid off, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, check the rings on those jars, because typically the rings will loosen up during the sterilization process. So as I pull the jars out one by one, I'm just going to, uh, you don't have to pull the foil lid off, just leave it on and uh, you can just snug those rings back down, make sure they're nice and tight as you move your jars in front of the flow hood. Okay, I gotta say first of all, I'm doing this in front of my flow hood, but uh, you don't have to do this in front of a flow hood. Uh, you could easily do this in a uh, glove box or just in a clean room. Uh, the step I'm gonna show you here is the, uh, the most difficult part of doing non-vented lids. Uh, for all their advantages, uh, this step's a little tricky. And uh, you don't probably wanna try this until you're pretty comfortable working with jars and syringes and flame and alcohol and all that because uh, we're gonna be working with rubbing alcohol, which is highly flammable, and we're gonna have the propane torch going, so you can see the, uh, the potential danger there. So uh, if you're a beginner, I recommend using the vented lids uh, so you can skip this step, but uh, if you're a little more experienced, uh, we can go ahead and get this rolling here. I'm gonna show you guys how to vent these. Now we need to let some fresh air into these jars. These jars, because they don't have a filter disc, they're in a state of vacuum. So we need to let some fresh air in there, but we need to let sterile fresh air in there. And uh, that's the trick. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a syringe. Now let me say first, too, that uh, this, this air, we're just going to let just enough air in to equalize the pressure in these jars. And this is going to be, that's going to be enough air for your mycelium to colonize and for these jars to stay viable for at least a year. Uh, I've had these jars go for 18 months, two years with, uh, with no air exchange. So in jars this size, air exchange is not necessary. There's a lot of debate out there on the internet about that, but I'm telling you, I've done this hundreds of times. If you're doing pint jars, uh, you do not need air exchange to have viable jars for at least a year, maybe two. Okay, so this is what we're going to use to aspirate our jars. Um, you guys will I'll have the camera set up. You can watch me do it step by step. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... This is just a 10cc syringe, and I have it about half stuffed with uh, polyfill, up to about the 6cc mark. It has a good, heavy BD needle on it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill this syringe right up with isopropyl. And I'm just using 70% uh, isopropyl. And I'm gonna fill that right up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna depress the syringe and I'm gonna basically shoot all that isopropyl through the polyfill, out the needle, and I'm just gonna depress it right into a uh, paper towel and I'm gonna squeeze all of that isopropyl out so it sterilizes the entire needle. So once I have it all the way depressed, I'm gonna hold it 
you don't want to let any air back in, okay, because then it's gonna, it could potentially suck in contaminated air. So uh, once I squeeze all the alcohol out, I'm gonna keep it depressed, and I'm gonna let air back into it slowly by uh, retracting the syringe, but uh, I'm gonna do that while I have the needle f basically flaming hot while I'm holding it in the uh, propane torch. Okay, so we're gonna have this full of alcohol. I'm gonna depress it, squeeze all the alcohol out the syringe, keep it nice and depressed down tight, don't let any air back in. Then I'm gonna hold the needle in front of the propane torch, get the needle nice and flaming hot, and I'm gonna draw air back in as that needle's nice and hot. And that's gonna ensure that it, we have sterile air flowing back in our syringe, okay? And at that point, uh, we'll cool down the needle. We'll pull the, uh, the depressor out completely. And I'll just uh, insert this needle in front of the flow hood here. We'll insert the needle right into those injection ports in the top of the jars. And uh, that's gonna allow sterile air to flow through the syringe, through the sterilized polyfill, right into the jars. Just want to jump in and mention a couple things here quickly you want to make sure you're using a good hypodermic needle on the syringe you're going to equalize your pressure with uh, the reason is that a good quality needle will stand up to this kind of heat where a cheaper one-time use needle won't uh, here i'm using a heavy duty bd 12 gauge needle and uh, you can see i'm retracting the plunger in several intervals and allowing it to cool in between and this will keep you from melting your needle and deforming the tip. But the key with this process is to make sure that that needle is always flaming hot when you retract the plunger and that ensures that you won't draw any contamination into your syringe. Hopefully you guys could see that okay as I went through the process. Uh, I might have made it sound more difficult than it actually is. Hopefully not. So now we're all equalized, and uh, I'm gonna now I'm gonna pull out our syringes, and we'll knock them up, label them, and they should be ready to go. Here's our six syringes with our six strains that we're gonna be knocking up in these jars. These were pulled from jars that were made the exact same way as these uh, a little over a year ago.
all knocked up and labeled. One thing I wanted to mention too is uh, I've used this uh, same syringe polyfill setup now, this exact same one for probably 10 or 12 times now. It hasn't hasn't caused any contamination on me yet. Uh, I just store it in a Ziploc bag and uh, go ahead and reuse it when I do another batch. So you don't have to like make up a new polyfill syringe every time you do this. You can use the same one several times. All right, so we have them all in our storage tote. I'm just gonna cover that up and uh, just don't want them in any direct light. Mycelium does not need complete darkness to grow normally. That's a myth. Um, you just don't want them in any direct, you know, really direct bright light, sunlight, whatever. So uh, I'm just gonna leave them in this tub, we'll cover them up. I'll probably just lay like a towel over the top to keep them kind of shaded. And uh, in two to three weeks, we should have nice viable jars. And if you do have any questions, just uh, hit me up in comments.